Guys, this is Mike from Wooly Bugged, and I have a special episode today for YouTube. This is the Huntsdale Fish Hatchery. I'm just outside of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and I am standing here with Andrew, who is the hatchery manager here. Uh, he works for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. You know that I'm uh, a big proponent of the Keystone Select Waters. And just to give you guys a little bit of a background, in 2016, the state started this program to take the older brood trout and put them in a concentrated number into eight streams across Pennsylvania. And it gives anglers here in Pennsylvania, both regular fishermen and fly fishermen, an opportunity to get out and catch larger fish on average and um, to catch more fish too. And Andrew has been a, a big part of that as a lot of these Keystone Select fish come out of this Huntsdale hatchery here. So you can see here behind us, we got a huge uh, raceway here of large Palomino trout. They just got done feeding some. And uh, you know, every fish that you dream about hanging on your wall is sitting here in this runway. But um, anyways, I'm with Andrew. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, your role here at the hatchery? Well, here at the Huntsdale Hatchery, we raise uh, fish for the southeast corner of the state of Pennsylvania. So specifically for the Keystone Select program, what we'll do is take brood fish that we've uh, spawned, um, ones that are no longer going to be spawned again. Those fish will be concentrated in areas uh, that we have designated Keystone Select areas, uh, where they're going to be put in um, higher densities. So somebody that might not have been able to catch uh, an elusive large trout other places uh, we'll be able to have a better opportunity to catch a larger fish put up on their wall. Okay guys, so Andrew and his crew are out here today and they're doing some work with the fish, they're doing some spawning, so we're going to be taking a walk up here to actually look at the process that they go through for spawning their fish. Um, is there anything you wanted to tell us about that before we head up there? Uh, what you're going to see up here is that these guys are taking um, our large female trout and our two-year-old smaller male trout and they're going to be spawning them uh, together to get what would be our uh, fish for the upcoming season in 2018. Awesome. So we're going to head up there guys and we're going to see if we can get some shots of some of these giant fish. I mean there are some trout in here that are like the trout of your dreams. They're humongous. Guys, look at the size of that rainbow right there. That is a monster. All right, guys, so Andrew passed me off here to Joe. This is uh, Joe Tusing. He's a fish culturist here at the Huntsdale Hatchery. What we do here is we spawn our own fish. All the fish that you see out throughout our hatchery are all spawned here. Uh, we take three-year-old females and a two-year-old male and we spawn them together, we spawn them in the buckets. As you see, if you can see it back there. Uh, and we do it then after they come out of there, we do a disinfectant process, and then they're taken over to our hatch house. Uh, over there for 20, 30 days, which they hatch, and then the whole process is there. They turn into fry, and fingerlings, and then they're brought out. Mm -hmm. So it is, a, it is a lot of things that we have to go through to get the fish into the stream. Yes. As you know, the Keystone Select yes. fish. So, yes. uh, some of the fish you're gonna see here today are three-year-olds that we will stock in the Keystone Select areas. Um, so you're kind of going to see it here, and then hopefully he'll catch them, and you'll see them out there, right? So. <laughs> I, like, I like the way you yeah, think, Joe. Right. Awesome. So. All right, so let's, uh, can you show yep. us the, the different in. stages here? We set up pens. Um, these, as you'll see, are two-year-olds. What we do is we take a a drug and, and we put it in there, it kind of knocks them out for a second. We okay. put them to sleep. It's yeah. like you do in a hospital. Like a setup. Yeah. Like a setup, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we put them to sleep and we'll put the females and males in different in different areas here. Okay. Uh, we'll take the buckets out uh, and as you're going to see this whole process go. We'll spray the eggs into the bucket and then uh, same with the males. Do the same thing to them. And we'll mix it together. Okay. Uh, they'll then pass them up here and we add water to them. Um, which opens a thing called a micropile in them okay. that allows then the sperm or the milk to actually go into the egg. Oh, okay. So that's how it's actually fertilized. Kind of preps them. Exactly. Preps that's them. The water is supposed to uh, 
initiate that that opening of the of the microfile and then the sperm will actually insert in there. Got it. And double first. So we're gonna show you the whole process and, and hopefully you can get in and, and do I'm some of that. Definitely lifted one of these giant <laughs> fish out of the water. I gotta get a fish. So that's then, Heath. And Eric. That's Eric. So they'll uh, they'll kind of direct you on what to do and how to hold the fish and, and all those kind of things and uh, we'll let you get in and have at it. All right, let's do it. All right, I'm looking forward to it. You good? You ready to go? And we usually do about eight eight females and about five males. So when we knock these fish out, or they said of like you said, we actually knock them out so you can handle them. Um, if not, there's no way we could allow the eggs actually to come out a little easier for us. Can we take a look in there, Eric? So these fish are you're getting ready to to pull the eggs out of them. These are the these males. Are the males these are the males. Let's we'll strip the milk. The and those are the females. One of the questions we ask is how can you tell the difference between a male and a female trout? Okay. And for us, we actually have to do it with a two-year-old fish because we have to sex them to move them apart. Uh, that's why you're going to have your two-year-old two-year-old males in here. And next year, you'll have your three-year-old females. So we do that at two years old. We get in, we net all the fish, knock them out, we, we inspect them, do all this kind of thing. So, so you don't know you don't know the fish's sex until two they're years two old. years old. Yeah, and even then, if they're little, or it's harder to tell because one of the main things is you're going to see an Eric will pull, pull up a, a, a male. So guys, fish. if you're out fishing and you're catching a two-year-old fish, there's no way you know if it's a male or female. It's it's a lot right? it's a lot harder unless you're a super expert. Yeah, it's a lot harder. Males will get that pointed head, and then they'll get the hook jaw right here where my thumb's at. The end of their lip will get hook jaw. And the female's head will be more rounded like a torpedo. And, and he can pull the female out here and kind of show so you. So the males get the hook jaws and the females have... There's the female. So guys, a lot of you may know that the female trout have the rounded jaw and the males have the hook jaw as they age. So how many eggs do you guys get out of one fish? It's, it's about a thousand per pound of fish is what we figured. So it's about three to four pound fish. A thousand uh, eggs per so pound. about three thousand eggs around there. That's amazing. So that one is good. Yeah. So and not all of them, not all the males have the milk. Correct. And we actually have already went through our females uh, and have picked the ones out that are ripe. Not all the females come ripe at the same time. Hmm. So we went through about a uh, thousand fish here, and we got about a hundred that were right. So now today, is what you're seeing is we're going to take our right ones. And next week we'll do the same process. We're going to do those 900 fish, and then we'll take whatever's right. So how do you know if a female fish is right? When you pick it up, we do the same process as you knock them out. When you pick them up, you can check them. You can feel them. As you're you can feel do, if they have the eggs in them. You can feel if the eggs in Is there. it a particular time of year? Is that why you're yes, doing it now? absolutely. So, so it's always like summertime? July, yes. Okay. The middle of July is actually when we start to find some that are starting to become ripe. And they'll run for about six weeks or so. And that's not, that doesn't correspond, is that correspond with how fish spawn in the wild? Uh, do we, they do the summer or is that a... It, it does not all the time. Uh, some do uh, and some don't, but we also do a thing called a uh, lighthouse, which okay. we can change the light in fish and make them think that it's spawning time. Oh, interesting. So what happens for us is we can speed it up so we can get them earlier, okay. so we can get the fish bigger to get them out in the stream. So we kind of trick them into spawning. Gotcha. So yeah, it's, that's a, it's a process in there. We don't do that here. Right. Some of the other hatcheries do that because our fish and these rainbows that are going to spawn now we have plenty of time to get those up the size for the for the anglers. Got you. So these fish down here, guys, even though they appear that they're dead on the bottom, they're actually 
under the influence of a sedative, so they will come back and start if swimming around. If you look real close, you can see them gilling. You can. Yeah. They're. Yeah, you'll see see your gilling right there. Yeah, it's they actually see. still breathing. Yep. We just knock them out temporarily. That way, we can take the eggs out of them. Interesting. So we don't so we don't hurt the fish, basically. Sure. As I said about the micro pile, this actually starts the micro pile uh, and allows the milk to insert into the egg. And they'll sit there for now two minutes. Okay. And then we'll add a cover shot of iodine on them that helps with disinfectant and things like that. And after that, that'll sit for two minutes. And we'll add a full shot of iodine, they'll sit for half an hour. And then they come back out and they're put in this bucket that now the, this is starting the water hardening process. Okay. So the actual, when you have the egg out, and I'll show you some of these. And Heath will show you some, we'll spray some out. So these are eggs. So these are eggs. This is what they look like. Okay. And right now you can actually just push on them and they'll bust. Okay. Pretty easily. But as they water harden, they become hard and they will not. It's like a super ball. He's a professional, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Wow. He's doing good. He's hired. <laughs> Minimum wage, right? <laughs> Minimum wage, right. <laughs> you can keep going if you want. Make sure they're all out of there. Keep still some really good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but you won't hurt the fish. It's amazing how many fit in there. You just keep, we call that stripping. So you just keep stripping till they're all out. You see how their belly is starting to get soft? Yeah, I see that. That's all right, there you go. She says, I'm done. And then she goes over here. She goes right over here. Got the speed down. <laughs> We've done it a couple years. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Guys, this is a Keystone Select trout that's probably going to be coming to a stream near you in 2018. So uh, the state's definitely putting some great fish in there for you guys. So where do you? Where's your favorite Pennsylvania stream to fish? That's a tough one. Uh, probably like either Spring Creek or Penns Creek. Spring Creek or Penns? Yes. How about you? Where's your favorite Pennsylvania trout stream? Mountain Creek. Mountain Creeks for brookies, wild brookies. Joe, where's your favorite? Where's your favorite Pennsylvania fishing for trout? Probably a small little stream in Virginia County called Lost Creek. Lost Creek. I've heard of Lost Creek. Uh, I never fished it, they but do I've have heard some uh, natural reproduction area up in the upper part of Lost. Do they? Creek. Uh, a lot of brook trout. Yeah. Where's your favorite? Lower end of the breaches. Lower end of the yeah. breaches. There you go. And now, where's your favorite place to fish? Wherever you are, my. Aww. That's sweet. Can I put that in the video?
So guys, when I was up there talking to Joe, who's one of the fish culturists here, he was telling me about this genetic mutation that happens in some of the trout here. And, and it's actually, I think, across the board. It can be rainbows, uh, brookies, or brown trout. It's actually a mutation that causes the fish to have a blue tint to it. So here at the hatchery, they call them blue trout. And um, they weren't quite sure on the percentage that the mutation occurs, but they threw out a number that it might be one in every 200,000 fish. So here in this golden tank, they have about 20 of these blue trout that they've pulled out over time to put in here. And these fish actually take longer to grow, but it's really uh, kind of eerie. They have like a, a iridescent blue tint to them. Um, so I'm going to show you some footage here. You can see what they look like. It's kind of cool. So guys, I don't know if you can see this, but this trout right there is actually what they call a blue trout. Um, there's another one over here. Guys, that fish right there is also what the state fish culturists would refer to as a blue trout. Um, it might be kind of hard to see on camera, but if you're seeing this fish in the sunlight, uh, it definitely does have like a blue iridescent color to it. And if you would look at it inside of a tank full of rainbow trout, the rainbow look very dark against the bottom, but these blue trout definitely have like a blue or green tint to them. So that is a blue trout right there. So guys, I had a great morning out here at the Huntsdale Fish Hatchery outside of Carlisle, PA. I'm actually not too far from Boiling Springs. Um, I want to shout out uh, a big thanks to Dee, uh, to Andrew, the, um, the head of the hatchery here, to Joe, the fish culturist, and to Adam, uh, also with the, the Fish and Boat Commission. Thanks for allowing me to come out here and to show everybody uh, how you guys do the spawning for the Keystone Select fish here and kind of giving us an inside view of what everything looks like on, on the back end here and the program that the state runs to let so many people here in the state of Pennsylvania catch fish, uh, let the kids come out and catch a fish of a lifetime that they're going to tell stories about for years to come. Um, that's really what it's all about and any one of the guys that work here will tell you that that's really what it's all about. So. Uh, Thanks again for watching Wooly Bug. Um, click subscribe below. Uh, would love for you to follow my channel. I appreciate all my followers. I'm getting real close to 500, and, and I appreciate everybody that's on there. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch up with you next weekend.